that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Amen. And you never forget about those that was with you when you, listen, when you wasn't nothing, when, when nobody showed up, they saw, they saw, they saw potential. Amen. And let me let me just say this. Thank God for my wife that saw potential in me. Wait, listen, if it wasn't for her seeing potential in me, I would have never reached my potential or, or, or working towards reaching it. Amen. So I thank God for my family. I thank God for my friends. I just thank you. I thank and those that could not come on site to the campus. You, those that are watching. I was talking to my brother, and, and we haven't communicated in, in a while. Uh, my brother Earl, and, and he really encouraged me. He really encouraged me. Uh, I, I'm grateful. Listen, there are times, even though we're doing the right thing, we get discouraged. We feel like throwing in a towel. And, and I, I can't really tell you uh, what he, what he, how he put it, but he, he, in other words, he said, don't quit. He said, I'm going to just put it in a, in a nice way. He said, heck no. Don't you bet not quit. I can't, I can't tell you how he really said it, but I said, he said, you know what I'm saying? I said, I know what you're saying. He said, don't quit. He said, don't quit. He said, hell in a good way. He said, you bet hit. You heck no, hell no, you bet not quit. And I said, he said, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be disrespectful. I said, I got what you said. He really encouraged me yesterday. He said, bro, if it ain't helping nobody else, it's helping me. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. And if it just helps one person, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Yes. So we fight and we continue to help people. He said, bro, I wish I could do what you're doing. He said, why? He said, let me ask you a question. Why do you do what you do? I said, well, I, I, I want to develop people. I want to make a difference. And I, I said this key word. He said, I want people. I want to change people. He said, that's it, bro. He said, making changes. He said, that, and, and a little change is better than no change at all. I might not be where I should be, but just listen, I'm better today. He said, bro, he said, that's it, bro. He, 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 he was trying to get off the phone. He said, he said, he said, he, he called me, he said, bro, bro, man, brother, man, brother, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And anyways, I, 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 he said, man, he said, bro, I wish I was there. He said, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, go in, yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate him. I appreciate him. He said, I'm doing better. I'm doing better. He said, that's what it's about, changing. Change. A change, a change has come over me. You know what? We was all born by the river, but a change is coming. <laughs> Amen. So let's go to the word of the Lord on today. I love it. I said, bro, you encourage me. Thank you for encouraging me. I got family. I got folks out there that's encouraging me. And I, and I appreciate you. I appreciate you to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. I want to go to the word of God on today. Uh, listen, I'm grateful. I, I have to celebrate you. And, and, and those that could not make it, I celebrate you. It is because of you that we continue. It is because of your encouragement that we continue. It is because of God's call that we continue. Amen. Uh, I want to continue our series, the Redemption Series. And I want to read, I'm going to read our text. And then I'm going to give you uh, where we'll get the title of our text. The title of what we're going to deal with the series is the Redemption Series. And this will lead us all the way to the to Calvary. And, and when Jesus gets up off of the cross, he doesn't stay there, Sister Mo, but he gets up. And, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. Listen, I can go from Sunday to Monday. I, I can deal with Blue Monday. I can deal with Tragic Tuesday. I can deal with Worry Wednesday. I can deal with Tough Thursday. I can deal with uh, Friday, Friday. I can deal with Wonderful Saturday. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Tomorrow. Listen, if, if, if everybody leaves me, and I don't think they will, Jesus will never leave me. It's because of him. I can face tomorrow. And I want to, lest I be remiss, unless I forget, I want to congratulate Sister Ferris for handling worship yeah. alone. Her, 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 her partner in crime was, was under the weather. So, so, so she's been developing the lead worship. Amen. Uncle Dino looked and he was, he, you had Uncle Dino smiling. So, so I know you did good. I know you did good. Your brother was like, okay, okay. So listen, thank you, Sister Pierce. Thank you for allowing the Lord to use you. God wants to do some great things with you, with you, with you. I want to read this 
Let's go to Isaiah 9 and 6. 9 and 6. And we'll read a little bit the A part of verse 7. The A part of verse 7. Isaiah the 9th chapter, verse 6. And the A part of verse 7. Amen. I'll give us a few seconds to get that. I'm excited on today, as you can see. If I'm excited, the world can see. <laughs> if, if I'm down, the world can see. Amen. That, I got to stay excited. I'm, you, we are at our best when we're excited. Amen. When we've got the, we're focused and got the eye of the tiger. So today, I've got the eye of the tiger. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers and your presence. I need them all. Amen. Amen. The Bible says this in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 6. It says, for a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. I love this verse. One of my favorite verses. It says this. It says, and he will be, will be called wonderful, comma, counselor, comma, mighty God, comma, everlasting father, comma, prince of peace. His government and its peace will never end. We'll leave it right there. He will be called Wonderful, <laughs> Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And what a perfect passage for such a time as this. Oh, we need peace on today because in the UK it's going down. And, and we better be praying and thanking God. Listen, it is because of the grace of God. Because you know what? Good people are wearing their all of their goods in a, they're carrying rather their goods in a suitcase. Listen, we ought to be grateful because we could be doing the same thing. We're not above that. We're not better than that. It's just because God is being real kind and real good to us. If it had not been for God on my side, I would have, listen, I should have been dead. I could have been dead. I would have been dead. But the mercy of God said, give him another chance. Thank God for his mercy. His mercies are new every morning, Brother Sam. Great is his faithfulness. And then there's a scripture that says this. His loving kindness is better than life itself. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. And so as we continue our redemption series, I want to, I want to pick our title in this series, which we will get from 2 Corinthians 9 and 15. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9 and 15, and then I'll give you the title of our subject in our series the Redemption Series. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 15. And I want to read that from the New King James Version. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 15. Amen. Amen. They say I get excited too much, and so I'm trying to relax and calm down and, and express myself clearly. Amen. 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 I opened my water, and I still haven't taken Taking a drink, yeah, but since so the parents say, go and get a drink because yeah. you, you're gonna be, yeah, you, you, we need, we need, we need your vocal cords clear and and, and, and lubricated, so so they won't crack up on you. Amen. Let me go and do a little water break real quick, and I'm not the water boy, but I'm gonna take a water break. Amen. Mm hmm. Woo wee. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians nine fifteen says, "It's thanks be to God." For his indescribable gift. Amen. We're going to get our title from there. God's indescribable gift. That's the title of our, 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 our sermon in this redemption series. Amen. We said last week that Jesus is God's single solution because he is the only one that is adequate and able. Isaiah 63 and 5, one of my favorite verses of the word of God. He says, I looked, but there was no one to help. Oh, we in a situation. And I wondered that there was no one to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation. Wow. Jesus saw that we were in a trouble, in a situation that we couldn't get ourselves out. 
And, and woe to the person that sees a man or a woman in a situation that they cannot help themselves and walk by as if they're, they are invisible and their situation is invisible. Amen. When you see somebody in a situation where they cannot help themselves, ask them, can I buy you some lunch? Can, can I help you out? Can I fix your situation? Can I do something to let you know that God is still good and God is still generous and God is still gracious and that God is in control? Perhaps he's using you to show the mercy and the wonderful kindness of God. So Jesus says, that I'm the solution for the Father because I brought salvation myself. Not only is uh, Jesus God's adequate and able solution, but Jesus was built to bear our sins and our burdens. Proverbs 17 and verse 17 says, A friend loveth at all times. A brother is born for adversity. Jesus has shoulders able and adequate and strong enough to deal with your trauma. He's able, listen, let me tell you something. We're going to find out that your problem is no problem to God, nor is your problem a problem for God. Oh, listen, I know you in trouble. I, I know you don't see your way through, but what you're dealing with, I don't care if you can't tell your mama, if you can't tell your daddy, your problem is not too big for God. Your issue is not an issue with God. God loves when we bring him our problems. When I bring God my problems, I'm realizing that he is my source. He is my strength. He is my way maker. He is my miracle worker. He's light in my dark place. When I bring God my problems, it acknowledges the fact that he is adequate, that he is able, that he is not a solution, but he is the solution. Jesus is the answer for my problem. I don't care if I'm confused. He's the way through confusion. I don't care if it's dark. He is light. I don't care if it's I'm, I'm, I'm lonely. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And stop telling people only good folks can pray for all of us are bad in some ways. Listen, I don't, listen, when folks say they can pray for me, I'm not worried about whether they walk close to God, whether they are away from God. If they said they can pray for me, maybe they might be able to get a prayer through better than you because they might trust God a little better than you. I heard this this morning. Some of the people that say that they follow God, uh, uh, so they're what we call Christian atheists. They say God is able, but they act like he can't do nothing. God can do anything, but they act like he can. But, but I find there's people that have more faith in God than some of the so-called followers of God. So whoever prays for me, keep on praying. Keep on praying. It works. His prayer is working. So he bears our burdens. Not only that, but Hebrews 10, 1 through 6. I'm, I'm going to just come down further. I said that Jesus was able, he was built to bear our sins and to bear our burdens. Let's look at this. Look, look at Hebrews 10. I'm going to read a couple verses. It says, the whole system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. That's Hebrews 10 and 1, a dim preview of oncoming attractions of the good things to come. Jesus is the good thing, which is God's good solution for my problem. Wait a minute here. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year. But they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. Verse 2, if they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worship, worshipers, that's you and I, would have been purified once for all time. But look, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. When God saves me, Sister Ebony, he gets rid of my guilty complex. Oh, yes, he does. He does something forensically on my mind. Yo, thank God for the Lamb of God, which was slain. Some of us can be forgiven, but some of us are forgiven, but we still got the chains on. He breaks the chains. He throws the chains off and says, you are free. Follow me. You are free. And then he takes away my guilty complex. You know what? I shouldn't have to walk around saying, oh, I'm in the store. I'm going to buy this. No, I buy what I buy because I'm not guilty. I am free. Thank God I'm free. Free from the past. Free from everything. I am free. The Bible says he redeemed us and released 
released us from our sins. Thank God for the redemption of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But instead, verse 3, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. Listen, if you forgive me, I don't want you to remind me of what I did last week. God said, I will never remember your sins ever again. He clears the guilty complex. Yes, he does. And they were reminded, I've jacked up again. I've missed it again. Verse 4, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offering. But you have given me a body built to die for mankind. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. What are other offerings for sin? Perhaps your good deeds. Perhaps your good way. Perhaps you going on the corner saying, God, I put in so many hours. Listen, baby, it is the free gift of God's love that saved you by his grace alone, by his mercy alone, through faith alone, sole, sole uh, Deo, through God alone, sole fide, Christ, faith alone, sole Christos, Christ alone. It is, it's, the, it's all of God for the nothing of you and I. So why Titus 3, 4 said, it was his loving kindness and his righteousness that he shared, that he gave. My Savior is the single solution. He is the indescribable gift of God because he devoted his life unto death. That's the lifestyle of a worshiper. One that says, God, I will do what you say even if it kills me. Are you committed to God if it takes your life? You will be witnesses unto me. A witness is the word marturo, means I'm willing to die. And until you're willing to die, you are not fit to live. Uh, listen, I'm not just, just here. This is my life. I'm willing to give it up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you give it up for him, he said, no man that has given up their life for me will not receive in this life and the life to come. But watch this here, you're going to have trouble. Oh, but I, I would rather be in trouble with man and family than to be in trouble with God. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm talking good on today. Not only is that, but Jesus is the solution because he is eternally God. And he is empathetic to my weaknesses, my woes, and my worries. Jesus is not looking down from heaven saying, mm, mm, mm. He came down from heaven and walked this earth with us. He is the God who comes close. He is the God who is acquainted with our diseases. He's acquainted. Yeah, I know all about it, and I came to heal you from your diseases. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, we have this high priest who is ours. He understands our weaknesses. For he faced all of the same tests as we do, yet he did not sin. Yet he did not cave in. Yet he did not quit. Yet he did not concede. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, Sister Ebony, and we will find grace, Brother Dino, to help us when we need it most. I need grace right now. Unlimited grace. Saving grace. Keeping grace. Dying grace. Grace upon grace. Mercy upon mercy. I need the Lord right now. The song says, if you ever needed the Lord, sure going to need him right now, right now. Yeah. And then we said he is fully God and fully man. And he satisfies my thirsty soul. Philippians 2, 5 through 7 says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was what? Fully God. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, Sister Bears. He took the humble position of a slave and was born a human being. He's God and he's man. God to redeem me. Man to identify me. God to redeem me. Man to identify me. God to redeem me. Man, he cannot be, he's not, a, he's not a escape, he's not away from me, but he came to identify with me. He understands, he knows, 
He's been through it. And therefore, he says, I got you. I Listen, I got this. I got you covered. Call on my name. I'll bring you up. I'll bring you through. I'll bring you over. I'll make a way. I'll pick you up. I'll turn you around. I'll get you out. I'll deliver you. I'll set you free. I'll do it over and over again. He's the same God yesterday, the same God today, and he forever will be. Jesus, if he did it before, he can do it again. God's not afraid of you. He's not afraid of your problems. He's not afraid of your enemies. He is for me. He is God's indescribable gift. His name is Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He is generous and gracious. He is my healer and my helper. In Matthew 8, verses 2 through 3, we won't quote it, but he healed the leper. I said he's generous. He says, are you willing? He said, Jesus said, I'm willing. And he touched him. You don't touch a leper. But what did I say? That what God, we, God can touch us without our infirmities touching him. It only touched him to bring him close, but it doesn't taint him. Are you willing to hear me? Our problems touch Jesus, but it doesn't taint Jesus. That's good. Amen. I'm going through. It doesn't burden him, but he gets involved with me. My problems touch him, but it doesn't taint him. He healed the leper in Matthew 8. And the leper said, if you're willing, you can clean me. Jesus put his hand on the leper and he says, I am willing. He is a generous God. I don't care what you deal with. Our generous, gracious King of Kings and Lord of Lords said, come to me if you're in trouble. Come to me if you're stressed out. Come to me if you're down in the ditch. Come to me if you're depressed. Come to me if you're discouraged. Come to me if it's dysfunctional and I will help you. And what Jesus just told me this. He said, let you know. He just told me this. He, he just told me this in my ear. He said, your secret is safe with me. Yeah. He said, I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to put your business out in the streets, but I'll help you. Under the blood, I will help you. I will wash you under the blood. Your secret is safe with Jesus. Yeah, folks will tell your business, but Jesus said, come talk to me. Tell me about your troubles. He said, I'll hear your faintest cry. I will answer by and by. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right, all right. Listen, Jesus heals the leper of his deadly disease. He heals the leper's physical, mental, social, and economical dis-ease by touching him. And restoring him. <clears throat> this leper was quarantined. He hadn't been around social. He had no social life. When you separate a man from society, he goes mad. We were made to be interdependent. That means you have something that I don't have. Brother Dino has something that I don't have. Sister Mo has something. This church has something that I don't have. And because of you, I'm better. And because of me, you're better. We are a family like a giant tree. We need each other. So listen, Jesus touched this man. He hadn't been touched in years. But he touched him. He Listen, when you hug folks, that's healing. When you talk to folks, that's healing. Jesus touched this man and he was mentally healed. He was socially healed. But when God delivers you, sister, it's only the one touch of God that will make your life better. All we need is a word from the Lord. Yes, one word will heal us. Yes, one word will change us. If God, listen, when Jesus says yes, Nobody can say no. That's all we're saying. He is God's indescribable gift. He restored this man. Just one touch, just one word of God will change us forever. Your problem is not a problem for Christ, nor is it a problem to Christ. You can hashtag that. Your problem, my problem is not a problem for Christ, nor is it a problem to Christ. And let me just say this here. I'm God's problem. I'm not your problem. Don't worry about me. We gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. I'm gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's interested in me. He's the incomparable God. We the, the title today in this series is uh, the in God's indescribable gift. 
Why is he in the struggle though? In the struggle means words cannot encapsulate who he is. Words are, are not big enough. They're, they're not enough words. He is the great, great I am. He, they're, they're anything you can name him, he is that and more. The song uh, written by Carlton Davis sang by J.J. Harrison, I am, says I am the Lord. I'm the almighty God. And I am the one for which nothing is too hard. I am the shepherd. I am your door. I am the good news to the bound and the poor. See, I am, I am, I am. I am the righteous one. I am the lamb. I am the ram, the bush for Abraham. I am the ultimate and sacrifice for sin. I am your redeemer, beginning and the end. I am, I am, I am, I am. I am Jehovah. I am the king. I am the Messiah. I am David's offspring. I am your high priest. I am the Christ. I am the resurrection. And I am the life. I am, I am, I am, I am. I am the bread. I am the wine. I love this part. I am your future, so leave your past behind. Yeah, don't let nobody tell me what I used to do. I used to live there. But I didn't grow up. I didn't move to a new hood. I, this hood is different. This hood is better because Jesus is running my hood. I used to clap that. I used to go in. I used to go out. But I'm new. I'm ready. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I might act like, listen, I might have a relapse, Brother D. I, I, might, I might go back to my old ways for a moment. I might have a temporary moment of insanity. But then I got folks like my wife. Did. She said, what are you doing? Pull yourself together. And you can't pull yourself together if you're not becoming a new person. You have nothing new to go to if all you've been is the old. That's why our wives get on us. That's why our families get on us. Because they see potential. God is my potential. He's the greatness on the inside. I can be something. I am something. I will be something. Because the great I am said, leave my future in his hands. Leave my past behind. Yes, that's what he says. Listen, he says, he says this. I am, I am, I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I am Jehovah Nisi. I'll fight your battle. I'll pick you up. I'll turn you around. I'll put your feet on solid ground. Just call my name. Yeah, I know they said just call my name and I'll be there. But Jesus said call my name. And you know what Jesus also said, Brother Dino? He said, you get close to me, I'll make you put your phone down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I, listen I, ain't gonna say, I was about to say I love my phone, but... Uh, my wife said, yeah, he do. Listen, God, Jesus said, I'll make you, I'll, I'll blow your mind. I'll make you put your phone down. That's what he said. He said, call my name. I'll be there. Amen. Yeah. He's my way maker, my strong tower. Just call on my name. He's the sweetest name I know. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Yeah, just call him. In the midnight hour, call it. When I'm struggling, call it. When I'm lonely, call it. When I don't understand, call it. When I'm weak, call it. The Bible says that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. The Lord is a strong tower. He's a, he's a stronghold in the day of trouble. Jesus does not need us to beautify him. Let me watch, watch me here. For he is the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. He does not need to be made bright or blinged out. He is the light of the world. He shines brighter than the noonday sun. You don't need to add strength and dignity to Jesus, for he is the almighty God. Revelations 1, 4 through 8 from the New King James Version. John says to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. 
and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to whom, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood, watch this, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He don't have some power, he got all power. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says power is resting in his hand. And let me stop right here and say, I know stuff is going on in the UK, but God is not asleep. God is our friend. So therefore, he's not a sleepy friend. And at the right time, God will make his move. All things are working together for the good of those who love him. Those who are the call. Don't worry about it. Trust God. Trust God. He is God's indescribable gift. Isaiah 9 and 6 says that he's a child born, a son is given. We're just going to barely tap into this. Look at the fact that he's a son that is given. Proverbs 30 and 4 says, who but God goes up to heaven and comes back down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps up the oceans in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? What is his name and what is his son's name? Tell me if you know. The Solomon, the Proverbs said, who is God and what is his son's name? Look at his theology. The son is eternal because God the father is eternal. And if there's going to be an eternal father, there's got to be an eternal and eternal son. Yes. Amen. John 1, 14 through 18 says that Jesus is the eternal son of God. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Hebrews 1, 5 through 6, and then 8 through 12. For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son. Unto us a son is given, Isaiah said. He says, you are my son. Today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father. He will be my son. Verse 6, and when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all of the angels worship him. Verse 8, but to the son, he says, your throne, O God, endures forever. You rule with the scepter of justice. Verse 9, you love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O oh God, your God has anointed you. Jesus is the Son, and because he's the Son, he is God the Son. He's the indescribable gift. A man, a good man, a mighty good man could not save me. He had to be God and man together. I, I, my wife goes, my wife is bummed. She beautiful. She, she smells good, look good, but she can't save me. Mm. <laughs> Only Jesus gets that credit. Amen. 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 Listen to this. And we're going to stop right here. History is indexed with men who have tried to rule the world, but have faded away into eternity on the pages of time like printed words bleached out by the rays of the sun. This is what Dr. Rod Matum says. Men like Nebuchadnezzar, watch this here, Alexander the Great, the Caesars of Rome, Napoleon, and Adolf Hitler, and let me just put this in there, and Vladimir Putin, and Vladimir Putin. I put that in there. I'm helping you out, Dr. Rod Matum. Uh, and listen, and Adolf Hitler are just memories or stories in a history book. Vladimir will be a history in a history book, but history is God's story. It's his story. He will have the last say. Stop worrying. Stop wondering. God will stand on the last. He's the last man standing. He will have the final say. Listen, and, and, and listen, there's stories in the history book. There's one who will come again to take his rightful place as king of kings. What are his qualifications? What will he be like? Can he satisfy five key questions? 
The five names in this passage reveal a portion of his nature, a portion of his nature, a piece of his nature, beginning in the past, advancing to the present, and ending in the future of mankind. The description given was fulfilled in Christ. What is his personality and character like, Sister Ebony? The Bible says he is wonderful. Yeah, that's what he's like. What is his educational background? He knows all things, and he is the supreme counselor. He's the wonderful counselor and teacher of teachers. Listen, what is his nationality? He is the mighty God. That's where he, he comes from heaven. He's the God who is almighty that is relative and knows what I do. What is his nationality? He's God. He, what is his color? He's the God of every nation. Bless his name. What is his previous, previous work experience? He is the creator of the universe. He is and the father of all eternity. Listen, what is his special talent as the God man? He is the mediator between God and man and reconciled believing men and women, boys and girls with God, making him the prince of peace. Yeah, these five names reveal that Christ is all we need, will ever need. He is all things to all men. So listen to this. To the weary, withering, wounded, and wishful, he is wonderful. To the confused and confounded, he is the counselor. To the meager and miserable, he is the mighty God. To the erratic, the evaded, and the eluded ones, he is the everlasting father. To the perturbed, the perplexed, or those in pain, he is the prince of peace. God's indescribable Gift. We're going to stop right there. Amen. We're going to stop right there. As we continue this series, the redemption series. Amen. Praise God for you. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for allowing us to minister uh, God's word to you. We pray that it will deliver, heal, and set you free. It will change you forever. Hey, a small change is better than no change at all. Praise God for the small change. And, and in the words of, 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 of Sister Bear, she said, that's the past. I messed up. She said the past was 30 minutes ago. I, that's the past. Hey, a new day, a new way is coming. Praise God. We want to invite you to this God who will change you and give you his indescribable gift. We want to invite you to him. Let him in. He'll change everything about you. It won't happen overnight. You didn't get into trouble overnight. Amen. But he's going to sweep around your front door. He's going to clean you up through and through. He's going to make you blend. He's going to make you shine. He's going to make you better. He will he'll make you better and take you back to the same hood that he dug you out of so that you can bring some other folks out of the hood, out of the hood. Your Listen, your ministry is where you came from, but God said, I got to make you better so you can get them out and make them better. Amen. So we want to invite you to him. Then we want to invite you to be a member of this body. We need you and you need us. And before we go, we want to ask you, it's a request, not a demand, to invest here in this ministry where kingdom work is going on. Lives are being changed around the world. People are being delivered around the world. We want to invite you. You can do so via our cash app, which is the, to the, it's the dollar sign, Church Beyond Walls via Venmo at Church Beyond Walls via PayPal to 951-522-2125. We ask you to follow us on our uh, social media platform, which is www.churchbeyond.org. www.churchbeyond.org. Amen. You can see us on many platforms. Share this word. Help us do the work of any evangelist. Get the good word out. Share with somebody. You don't know what this word can do to change them forever. They'll be forever grateful that you allow them to experience the game changer. Hey, Jesus is the game changer. We'll see you this same time next week. And may the Lord richly bless you is our prayer.